Congenital malformations, like the ones you see here, used to be called monsters, at least all the way up to the 19th century. And Willem Vrolijk, the anatomist of Museum Vrolijk, explained why. He said monster came from the word, the Latin word monstrare, meaning to show or to demonstrate. And the reason for this was that in the pre-modern times, people believed that the birth of a malformation would predict something, like something bad happening to people, like an omen. Willem Vrolijk also describes that people believed there were various other causes that could uh, result in the birth of a malformation. One of them was, of course, that the devil was at play. Another was that it was a punishment of God. But a third cause he describes had to do with that the mother saw something during her pregnancy. She, for instance, she saw something that she got really scared of and that as such, that what she had seen was imprinted somehow into the developing fetus. A good example of this is described in the following anecdote. Attached to a specimen from the Museum Frolicianum, the museum of his own father, Willem Frolic found the following note. This malformed child was born in the village of Tienhoven, in the province of Utrecht. When the mother, a 30-year-old woman, was pregnant for six weeks, it was in the midst of winter with a sharp frost, and she was sitting in her house and spinning wool. The woman had a cat, but she hated the animal, and so she decided to beat the cat to death and drown it. She seizes the animal, goes outside to the waterfront, and hits the cat with its head to the sharp edge of an ice floe in such a way that the skin of its head is all in rags and blood is everywhere. Convinced that the cat is dead, she goes inside again to go on with her spinning. She closes the lower part of the door, but keeps the upper part open. But she has no rest. A quarter of an hour later, the cat comes in, comes to its former strength and jumps over the lower part of the door into the house. With its tongue stuck out, its ears pulled back into the neck, a bloody head with rags of skin, the skull cracked open, and the brain exposed. Full of rage, the cat attacks the spinning woman. They get into a struggle, and the, sh and the woman wins. After that, she goes out again, beats the cat once more against the ice floe, and puts the animal in the water below the ice, and waits until she is certain that the animal is dead. The rest of the pregnancy follows without problems, but then she gets into a difficult and long-term labor. The child she delivers was stout and fat, but it had no neck. Its tongue was sharp like a cat's tongue. Its ears were pushed back in the neck, like with a furious cat. Its skull was open, and bloody rags of skin hung from the back of the head. All of this just like the unfortunate cat. So apparently the woman makes a connection between seeing, the, uh, seeing the, the, the bloody head of the cat and later on the fact that she uh, gave birth to a malformed child. To Willem Froelich this was an example of, um, well, some, some of, um, of kind of folk belief that he was really trying to debunk. He really was convinced uh, that malformations were not the result of something uh, women had, had seen or, or people had, uh, had witnessed, but something that uh, was within the biology of the, uh, of the human body. Willem Frolich became interested in congenital malformations from about 1836. And in 1838, he published an important publication called Hints about the origin of birth defects and the value of the study of congenital malformations. But then, of course, this was a translation and he published this in Dutch. Um, in that publication, he debunks all of these all, all this type of um, folk belief and interpretation. And later on he publishes more and more about congenital malformations. Eventually he creates a kind of atlas on uh, congenital malformations called the tabulae. And he dedicates several pages to the type of malformation that he described uh, with regard to that unfortunate uh, mother and the unfortunate cat. 
The malformation is called anencephaly. So in this case, we see the illustration of uh, uh, a few fetuses with uh, anencephaly in different, uh, different types of anencephaly, actually. And here we see uh, examples of skulls of anencephaly. This type of mal malformation we nowadays call anencephaly. That means more or less that there is no brain. Uh, in Froelich's days, he referred to it as acrani, and he really focused on the fact that the skull was not closed properly, but open. And that's something we can see in this uh, skeleton uh, that we have here. This is an actual skeleton with anencephaly from the Froelich collection. And this may well have been the skeleton from the malformed fetus that Froelich relates to with regard to that note. If we look at this uh, skeleton, we see that more or less the, the complete skeleton is in a normal state, but if we go to the head, we really see that the normal brain case is completely absent, uh, and all the cranial bones have, well, have not developed properly. We're actually looking directly on top of the base of the skull. And even if we go to the back of the head and look, and, and look at the neck, we also see that most of the uh, vertebrae of the neck are also um, not closed. This type of malformation, anencephaly, is related to a type of malformation that, that is much more familiar, which is called spina bifida. Um, but in spina bifida, usually the lower part of the vertebrae are not closed. And, um, and in this case, it's the upper part of the nervous system that remains open. So normally, if this would be a preparation on, on liquid, you would see a mass of tissue, not brain, not neural tissue, but similar to that on top of the head. So here we have three skulls. This skull is the skull of a normal uh, newborn child. This is the skull of a, an encephalus. And here you have the skull of a cat. What is interesting is that you see, if you look at the skull of the anencephalus, you see that this whole bit is absent. You see that the whole cranial vault is not, not present. Uh, and therefore you see that, uh, that all the cranial bones, uh, well, they have remained as a small rim of bone surrounding the base of the skull. Um, because of that, you also see that the whole uh, appearance of the face uh, is different. So you see that um, as the uh, frontal bones are absent, you see that the two eye sockets are not so much protruding to the front, but more upward in a sense. And that gives this skull more or less the appearance of the skull of an animal, like the skull of this cat, where you see that also the eyes, the eye sockets are more or less protruded upward. And uh, that's also why uh, in Dutch uh, this malformation used to be called in the past used to be called uh, cotton cop or cat's head because of this uh, similarity. So anencephaly, just like spina bifida, is a, a malformation that is the result of a maldevelopment of the uh, neural tube. And the neural tube is, a, is the predecessor of the brain and the spinal cord. And if this predecessor, this tube, does not close properly, the result is that the brain or part of the spinal cord will not develop. And as the, um, the, the cranial bones more or less follow the development of the, the brain, you also see that in case of anencephaly, yeah, all the cranial bones will not grow properly. And in that sense, you see, if you compare it to the development of a normal skull, you see a completely absent brain case. Nowadays, uh, malformations like uh, anencephaly or spina bifida are much rarer than they were in the days of Froelich. And the reason for this is that we now know that folic acid plays an important part in the development of the brain and spinal cord. So when mothers want to become pregnant uh, and during pregnancy they uh, take uh, folic acid. Uh, and this, the result of this is that this type of malformation became much rarer than in the past. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions or comments please write them down below. And of course please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you next time.